Senator Sanders, thank you so much again for being here. I appreciate it. I think I probably can kind of guess your answer, but how do you think the administration has been dealing with uh, the protests? Um, I think it is, you know, beyond belief. Uh, and we have, as you know, a former Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Defense, uh, speaking out and saying, you know, this is the military must not be used <laughs> against civilian protesters. Former Secretary of Defense uh, saying that. Uh, and um, you have a president who I think is consumed by his own political goals, uh, by his own narcissism, who will do anything he can to further those personal goals uh, at the expense of the American people. So not only is he not doing the right thing, not only has he not shown any empathy uh, for this crisis and for the pain of the African-American community, but he is certainly exacerbating it, trying to divide us up uh, in a way that I, I think uh, you know, we have never seen. And it was interesting. You have a conservative president like George W. Bush making a statement the other day, making yes. that point. All right. Yeah. You know, Bush is a, is a conservative Republican. What he is saying is we got to fight racism and bring people together. This is from a conservative former president, not Donald Trump. Though. If there's anything, if, if to say, hypothetically, the president called you up and asked you for advice and something to say, uh, what would you say to him? Well, I, I don't talk to the president because I think anything I said would be used as a photo opportunity or some kind of ma manipulative uh, uh, statement. Uh, but it is clear that um, as we head into this election, the American people have got to come together. Uh, and while we will have our differences of, of opinion, God knows I don't agree with Joe Biden on every issue. That is for sure. I think for the future of this country, for the future of our kids and our grandchildren, for our planet in terms of climate change, uh, Donald Trump has got to be uh, defeated. I think there's nothing that I can say to Trump that will have much impact on him. Um, now, uh, if you don't mind, can we talk about November and you know Joe Biden's campaign? And I, I know you, you chose to, you're supporting Joe Biden. How, how closely are you working with Joe Biden? Well, we're closely. Uh, our campaigns uh, are working together uh, in a number of ways. And, and as I said earlier, Jimmy, I understand not everybody agrees with anybody, not everybody agrees with me or Joe Biden or anybody else. But I would hope that the American people come together to understand that we have got to defeat in November Donald Trump, who in my view is the most dangerous president perhaps in the entire history of our country. And I'm going to do everything I can uh, to make that happen. Uh, where Biden's campaign and our campaign is working together is through a number of task forces on some of the major issues facing the country, the economy, uh, health care, criminal justice reform, immigration, uh, education, climate change. And we brought great people. He has his people. We have our people to figure out how we can hammer out policies uh, that both sides can live with. Uh, yeah. And um, they're meeting these task forces. I'm meeting right now. We'll see what the results will be. Uh, but certainly what my goal is, is to move this country uh, through a Biden presidency in a way that more strongly represents the needs of working people who are really, really hurting, not just now in the middle of the pandemic, but for many years. We've got half of our people living paycheck to paycheck, 40 million people living in poverty. So we can do better than that. We need to rebuild uh, not only our crumbling infrastructure, we need 10 million units of low-income and affordable housing. We've got a major housing crisis. We create jobs doing that. We create jobs, and I think Joe Biden understands this, transforming our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. And in my view, and Biden and I have different views on this, I happen to believe that health care is a human right. All people should be entitled to it. And we've got to take on the drug the greed of the drug company. So there's a lot to be worked on, but I hope at the end of the day, we'll come up with an agenda that speaks to the needs of working people uh, rather than just the big money interests who have so much wealth and power today. Is, the, is there a silver lining in any of this? 
Yeah, I think there is. And I hope, and, and I will be very upset if we don't take advantage of the moment. But Jimmy, we're going through a terrible, terrible, terrible moment. So much pain, so much suffering, so much mental distress, so much death, 107,000 people dead already. And I think the silver lining is that we have got to think about how we got here in the first place. Uh, do we have the healthcare system that we need in the wealthiest country on earth? And the answer is we don't. Do we have an economy that works for working families uh, even before the pandemic? No, we don't. Half of our people live paycheck to paycheck. They got nothing in the bank. And when those paychecks stop, you know what? You become desperate. You can't pay your rent, you can't buy food. Is that really the best that we can do for an economy? I don't think so. Uh, you know, so we have got to think big about how we got here, what kind of policies got us here, and have the courage to take on very powerful special interests, and in my view, move this country in a very, very different way. That, if you like, in my view, is the silver lining of this moment. Use this opportunity to move this country in a very di different direction than we uh, have been in. I'll take it. Uh, thank you so much, Senator Sanders, and uh, please give my best to your wife. Mutual. You take care. Bye, bud. Thank you. Thank you so much.